Hey everybody, thanks for being here for our Tuesday evening premiere. In the previous weeks, Nate of Nate Wright Art has actually been our fabulous, tried, trusty, and true caboose. We could always count on Nate to end our premiere train with a beautiful bang. Well now, for a little while, Nate is going to be actually starting out our premiere trains. That's right, he's going to be the engine setting forth our beautiful adventures each week for a little while. So we can now count on Nate to be our tried, trusty, and true excellent beginning. And after Nate this evening is going to be Lori of Lori Houston Art, followed by Camille of Camille Amoy Art. And then ending with me, yours truly. That's right, tonight I get to be the caboose. How fun is that? All right, thanks for being here, and let's take a look at what I'm presenting to you tonight in this video. Thank you for joining me here. Just look at this beautiful Camille Amoy inspired Dahlia. I am so happy with the results and I'm sure you're gonna love seeing the creation of this beautiful flower in this video presentation. Remember that this video presentation is part of our Tuesday night premiere train. And if you're with us at the time of premieres, we're so happy to have you here. So let's get this train ride rolling down the tracks. <laughs> So I began by painting the, my canvas with this beautiful gold by Deco Art. It's a dazzling, it's from the Dazzling Metallics line and it's called Splendid Gold. I'll show you the bottle up ahead a little bit. The coral color is a folk art color. It's in a two ounce bottle. I did not think to take any footage of that and I apologize for that. I think it's called Coral Something or Other. <laughs> But it's just definitely this really beautiful coral color. What I recommend is um, if you ever like a color palette of something that you're seeing in someone else's video, just go find colors that look like what you remember that you saw in the video. Because also keep in mind that monitors are different. So what the color actually looks like to me might not even really look like it does when you're looking at it on your monitor. So again, I think you'd actually be better off with the, the way that you like your results if you actually just go look for colors that look like what you saw in your screen that you really appreciated. And there are so many colors out there that it's really not that hard to do. And of course, you can always do some custom blending. So here are a couple of colors that are involved. And these are from these small bottles of Deco Art Americana acrylic paint. They're just these two ounce bottles of craft paint. And I have um, that other color, Berry Cobbler, in there. Now some of these other colors were not in the mix. These two golds are. That Dazzling Metallics over to the right, Splendid Gold, is what I have on my background. But um, I originally shot that footage for another painting that I actually tried to do that did not work. And what, what I then did was I used some of the leftover colors from that painting for the Dahlia here and it just never occurred to me to reshoot my painting bottles so I'm really sorry about that. So what I've done is I started out with this coral center like you saw and then I brought another layer of that dazzling metallics brand gold on top of the pre-dried layers of gold that I'd already laid down. And the reason I did that with my gold is because I really wanted the coverage to be really solid. I knew that this painting, if it worked, was going to be really pretty if that gold was really solid through and through across the canvas. So I'm taking one of the darker berry type colors and making a ring around the coral circle and then taking the darker berry color and going around that. So again, I really saw Camille do this sort of thing and I just did my best to copy what I saw Camille do. And so here I'm taking my spoon and swiping to make my first petal. Not my very first petal ever, but my first petal for this painting. Uh, I did have a few other goes with this technique and uh, most of them were complete washes. The one before this one came out pretty good and I'll show you a little bit of a sneak peek of that one at some point in this video 
and um, it definitely gave me some hope and some promise that I was on the right track. In fact, I do like it well enough that I probably will show the complete video at some point on my channel, but I later went on to do this particular Dahlia and I love this one so much that I just could not wait to show it to you. I just could not contain my excitement enough to show you the other one first and then wait until a later time to show you this one. I love the colors of this. It's so beautiful and I just love how everything came out here and I think that's part of it for me. I do love the blue ranges. I love the cool tones but I also really love the warm tones. I don't know, I guess I'm a colorist at heart, my friends, but um, I just really liked the outcome of this, and I think the color scheme has had a lot to do with that. So, as you can see, my petals are going pretty well. I had to redo that one a little bit. I got a little bit nervous having to redo that, and sometimes when I'm nervous, I don't do as good of a job as when I'm just not thinking too much of it. I don't know if it happens for you that way, but I'd love to hear from you to just know what your experiences are, which where we match in experiences or where we differ. It's just interesting, I feel, to hear those sort of things from people or to read them in the comments below. <laughs> So here I'm just finishing this first row. So this was not my first Dahlia, as I mentioned earlier, and the one before it was pretty decent. It was my first decent one. On this particular day, I did two other tries, but the first two were not full flower. And what I did in the case of those two is I just got an empty cardboard box, a little thin cardboard box, like the type of thing that you would get some food items in at the grocery store and then you've finished the food from inside it and I literally took scissors and cut apart the box to use as a little makeshift canvas to try swiping some petals because I really did not want to put up a canvas to try this and it was not my even that was not my very first time at this a couple of months ago I actually did try to make my first petals following what I believed I saw Camille do in her videos. Well, obviously I wasn't doing exactly what Camille did because mine did not even look like petals and hers do. So I tried that a couple of times and I just, I just didn't really like what was happening. It really wasn't working for me then. And I put it down and I did not really think about trying the technique until very recently. And I would say about the last week before I uh, did this this day, I was actually starting to have little inklings of ideas creep into my mind of possibly trying these dahlias again, but I didn't take any action on it. And then at one point I saw a very recent release that Camille did where she was really encouraging different artists to really try doing this technique and she had mentioned a few who actually already have. And at that point, I thought, yeah, you know, I'm going to try this again. So that was the day that I did four different tries, the fourth of which you're looking now. I don't know if that bird chirping picked up on this recording, but that is beautiful. I hope it did. That is beautiful. I hope you will get to hear that. Ah, oh, so lovely. Oh, sometimes nature provides the most beautiful visuals and the most beautiful audio tracks uh, for free. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, in my first two attempts that I did on this particular day that I ended up with this beautiful painting, my second row really was taking out the first row. I was not trying completed flowers. I was not going in a circle. I just was going in a line. Rather than putting my paint down in a circle like I did here, I just put it down in a short straight line and I had enough space where I could try maybe five or six petals in a row. And the very first attempt that I did on that, it really did not even look that great. I mean, maybe one or two of the petals kind of looked good and then the others were varying degrees of, eh, you know, not that great at all. And, um, and then I went for trying the second row on that one, even though the first row was not that great. And the second row completely destroyed the first row. So I got another section of box <laughs> from empty food containers and I spread out some paint for a background. I made a straight line again with two different colors 
I started swiping. At least this time, my petals were getting more consistent in the first row, but when I went to the second row, it completely ruined the first row again. At that point, I realized I must be doing something wrong. I must not be remembering something correctly compared with what Camille does. So I went back to her channel and I started watching more videos, paying particular attention when she went into the subsequent rows after the first row. And I saw that I just did not have my spacing properly done in what I had been attempting to do. So then I came back, I went for my third attempt, which was the little small painting before this one, and I achieved a much better result. It still was not as great as Camille's, and still wasn't as wonderful as how I feel this one came out, but it was pretty nice compared to before, and I was very encouraged with how big of a leap my progress had made uh, between those two points. And I was a little tired at that point. I really did not think I would paint anymore that day. I, I put all the paints away. I went and did some other things. And a few hours later though, I just had a fire in my heart. <laughs> I was like, it was just bugging on me, but in a good way, in an inspiring way. I was like, I just have to go and try another one. I would have honestly chosen a smaller canvas than what this is. I would have liked to have gone for uh, like an eight by 10, but I did not have any around. And, um, this one is 11 by 14. It's a little bigger than what I would have liked to have done, but I did not want to go out to the store to buy some more. I just wanted to be able to paint. So I just decided to go for the 11 by 14. And I have to tell you, my friends, I'm so glad that I did because I really like how this painting came out. I think it kind of surprised me. I, I had an idea that it might be a little bit better than the uh, try that I gave before this one, that third try that day. Uh, a five by seven canvas. I had one tiny canvas left here, five by seven, but that was it. I had nothing between that and 11 by 14, which is what you're looking at right now. And um, so while I expected I might get an improvement, I really did not expect that it would come out as pretty as how I feel this one did come out. So I'm so happy that I actually did choose to put it on an 11 by 14 because I probably would have been a little sad if it actually had been smaller. So um, again, my friends, I really want to give props to my friend Camille for inventing this. I don't honestly know how on earth she thought to do this. And it's not that easy, or at least it wasn't for me or a lot of people that have tried it at first aren't able to make the petals. I don't know if it was easier for Camille when she first started. I should, I have to ask her about that. I would love to hear more of the story. Hey Camille, why don't you actually tell us the story on a video? Tell us what it was like for you. Uh, how did you come up with this? Like, were you playing around? Was it an accident? Did you somehow make a stroke and then it dawned on you that it looked like a petal? Or were you actually trying to make a petal? Like, did you have this idea to try to make a flower? And I'd really like to just know, Camille, what it was like for you because, my friends, you have to have the spoon at the right angle, at the proper angle. You also have to have the pressure that you're swiping the spoon through the paint it has to be very light. If it's too heavy, it doesn't work. Obviously, if it's too light, you're going to skim right over the paint, so that's not going to work. So it's, it's interesting when you see somebody that's gotten a beautiful result, so you know that something is possible because you're looking at this result, this creation that they've come up with. And so you know that if you're not getting it, that you're just not doing something that they are, or you're doing something incorrect that they're not doing, something like that. But you realize that, so you can keep trying to improve if you want to put out the effort. But let's think about this from the case of someone like Camille. She never saw this flower before because she's the one that created it. So what was that like when you took your first swipes did they work and if they didn't what made you think they would what made you think you had to do something different and what would your idea of that have been do you, do you see what i mean my friends like how tricky that could have been in her in someone like her shoes where they haven't created this outcome yet but they're going for it and they're the inventor so there is no basis of somebody else that came before them that they can look at to then aspire for so I find this very fascinating and very admirable, you know, really to anybody 
who has developed a technique. I mean, for Rinska Dauna, for that matter, she describes how she uh, saw the technique with people blowing the paint with a straw. And she kind of liked what she was seeing, but she kept envisioning the blowing going wider, but she couldn't figure out how can I achieve that because the straw does this, but how can I get it to go wider? So she then decided to play around with the blow dryer, but it still took her like a long time to perfect that technique before she started showing it off. And, and then all of us can then learn it so much quicker, but you know, it, it took her a while to actually be able to bring what she was envisioning to reality, to find the happy medium of how to make that happen. So I just kind of get the idea that that may have been like that for Camille within the case of these beautiful, beautiful dahlias. So thank you so much, Camille, because I, I want to tell you, Camille, um, and also you viewers watching, when I have seen Camille do this in her paintings, of course, I've thought it's very pretty. It's very beautiful. She makes these beautiful flowers. And you may have thought that too, especially if you like to watch her channel. I'm sure you like her flowers. But I had no idea what this actually looks like in real life. And I have to tell you that what this painting that I did looks like in real life is so much more incredible than what it even shows on the video. And I actually think that Camille's flowers are a little bit better than mine still, but of course, I mean, she's had much more practice. This is my first good one, you know? I don't expect it's going to be the most perfect one I can do, but I'm even wondering how magnificent Camille's paintings must look like in real life because this painting here, it gave me such a reality check that I had never even imagined of uh, just in, you know, at least in this painting, the actual beauty of the real painting, it's, it's not, you cannot really get it here. It's, it makes you take your breath away in the real painting in, in front of your face. Um, and I don't say that lightly as the artist, because as the artist, I'm the hardest one to please with my paintings. So for one of my paintings to make my breath be taken away, I'm thinking it must be pretty freaking cool. <laughs> um, because usually I'm kind of like, oh yeah, that that's pretty good. Oh that, yeah, that's good. I like that. You know, I'm usually like that about my paintings. But this one, this one really took me off guard in a very good way. So my friends, if you've not tried this technique, I really encourage you. Uh, Camille is really encouraging people these days, or at least in one of her recent videos that I saw, to go for this. And if you're not getting it at first, to keep trying. And um, so I want to come forward with this video also to help Camille to show you guys that, yeah, you can do this. And it did not work for me straight out of the gate at all. But you know what? Most of the other techniques really did not either. Um, and if it, if there's something, if there's an outcome in a painting technique that you like, that you really like that and you really, really want to do it for yourself, I really encourage you to stick with it until you get it because you can overcome whatever it is that you need to overcome. It's just trial and error until you find the sweet spot. It's like when you learn to ride a bike and you, someone puts the training wheels on for you and you keep falling one side to the other until you can find what it feels like inside the core of your body, what that balance feels like. But when you do, you've got it and you're always able to keep the two wheels upright from then on. It's kind of like that in my opinion, in my experience with these type of paintings. If you're not getting the outcome that you are striving for, keep trying, keep going for it because you'll learn, you'll find out things along the way and you'll get it. Or you'll, you'll have a little bit different version of the person who inspired you, the artist who inspired you, and you'll have your own little like kind of spin within it or your own little look within it. But that's good though too, because you kind of want to be known for your thing, right? So I, I just really want to encourage you to go for some of these techniques if you like them and just keep trying. Uh, don't put up a big canvas at first. Just do like I did. Even take cut up pieces of boxes of, you know, granola bars, cereal boxes, cracker boxes, whatever that the contents is gone. Take out a pair of scissors, cut up pieces, and then slather a little bit of paint as a background, and then try your technique. 
you know that way you're not risking canvases um, and and try small try in a small way it, well, certain techniques you can't go too small this you can practicing these petals you don't have to go very big at all you you can have a very small amount of room to practice a few petals and then to go for a second row just to kind of get that part down uh, and then and then when you get that part down then go to a canvas if you want to on my five by seven I just did a half dahlia because the five by seven canvas is pretty small I thought it might be kind of tricky to try to do a full dahlia I, I have seen Camille do small dahlias so of course I knew it's possible but I did not want the added difficulty of trying to make very small petals by trying to put a full dahlia on a five by seven so I put a half dahlia on the five by seven for that reason um, so yeah I'm just going to uh, I'm gonna keep doing these I did not realize how much I would love this even when I saw Camille's beautiful flowers on her videos I did not realize how much I would actually love this until I did this one and I am so in love with this now you guys like I am probably going to be <laughs> making quite a lot of dahlias I of course I have some other things I keep talking about bringing to my channel including the technique I recently invented and last week I talked about announcing the name of it and I was actually going to make this week's video about that and I was going to show another painting I did with that technique and um, I just I couldn't help it though when I saw this Dahlia I had to bring this forth so now I kind of want to spend some time on both of these as well as some of the other techniques I like I don't know oh so many beautiful techniques and only so many days in a week all right so I have some really cool things for the center of this flower that's coming up and I did not really study too much what Camille does I think she also dots on paint but I rather than go back and really pay too much attention to what she does I kind of wanted to try my own way here and so um, you're gonna see in a few moments what I did So I'm going to start with the initial paint dots. I'm going to be using the flat end of a bamboo skewer. And I'm starting with my darkest berry color. And I put that down first. Now, of course, it's been my plan to make a lighter colored center. But I want to put a darker color down first because I want to create depth like the center of a flower would really have. So I really wanted to do what I could in a simplistic way to create texture and depth within the center of the flower. So I start by dabbing on this dark berry color as you can see what I'm doing here. And as I let you watch that before I explain the next part, which I'll do when I actually am doing the next part, I just want to remind you that we are doing this beautiful premiere train. And if you are here with us live at the time of premieres on our beautiful Tuesday, then remember that we're going to take a little detour after my video here. We're going to go see Lee and Jeremy at Massey Art Studio. And then we're going to come back to Nate who is officially a part of this train and his channel is Nate Bright Art and if you have been with us for the duration of this little train ride then I'm guessing that you have probably already seen Lori from Lori Houston Art she began our train ride adventure and then we went to Camille at Camille Amoy Art before coming here to me so if you are watching on the replay then I invite you to check in the description below for links to everyone's channels so that you can check out all of the beautiful presentations that took place within this train ride adventure because all of the artists here do very different work all of it's very interesting unique and beautiful and inspiring so you will find a lot of delight just in the visual beauty and of course a lot of things that you can learn so that you can incorporate beautiful things into your art
Look at this final, final result, my friends. I love this. I'm so excited by how this came out. And again, I want to thank Camille for developing this gorgeous technique and for bringing it to the fluid art community for all of us who wish to, to enjoy. And again, Camille, please tell us more about how this all started for you. I'm just so curious. Uh, it's, it's totally amazing. And again, I'll see you around my channel soon. Make sure you check out all the other artists in the premiere train and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time.